Swim Swam Podcasts coming to you. I'm host Garrett McCaffrey, joined by the new assistant coach at the University of South Carolina, Robert Pinter, who is joining us. I'm assuming still from Gainesville, um, still working with Gator Swim Club right now, Robert? That's correct. I have uh, two more weeks with Gator Swim Club, and then and, I'll uh, give the program over to John Halvey here, um, coming from Loggerhead Aquatic. transition, especially as you move on to the next step um, in your career. And you've done college coaching before. Uh, what made this move to South Carolina and being the new assistant uh, the right next step for you? Uh, well, it, it wasn't an easy step and an easy decision. Um, but in the end, it, I know it's the right one. So I'm very excited and very happy to be the new assistant coach at South Carolina and work with Jeff Popel. Um, you know, he, he and I interacted a lot over the last five years here in, at Florida, and I was the club head coach and uh, owner of the club. And it was uh, a great relationship and great match, and we used to chat a lot on the pool deck as well as, you know, I coach with uh, Coach Nesty as well and all the coaches here because um, it's, it's a great training environment, always has been. And um, it was a difficult one, you know, from my family standpoint and also moving, you know, I'm not – um, that young anymore moving is not an easy chore and um, uh, but when it was all said and done and the opportunities that South Carolina has to offer and uh, um, you know I had a little bit of fire in my belly to coach college and be in the, that competitive arena again and I think it all came together and um, those are some of the decisions that came into play when I made a decision to coach at South Carolina. Yeah and Obviously, I think you have a son I read in your bio that's 15 who swims. That's not an easy time to move. There's all kinds of different pieces that go into it. And the two pieces I heard you say most, and correct me if I'm wrong, but one, relationship with the coach. That's yes. got to be big. Can you talk just a little bit more about what that means and how that works and how you know for sure? Because I think a lot of us have had relationships with coaches that we thought were good until we were on deck with them a lot. And then we realized that there's some other things that we needed from you know, assistants or coaches that we were working with. How do you know that your relationship with Jeff is, is good? Uh, great question. And um, I'm actually relatively seasoned in this regard. So I've kind of been on both sided, sides of the equation. I'm on one hand, I was a head coach for many years with, with um, club and I know what I'm looking for in an assistant. And uh, I've also been on the other side where I was an assistant uh, coach with uh, three different universities at this point. And you just kind of learn that, you know, what are the things that kind of make you click with a head coach? You know, you have to have some of the same values that um, are required to coach. Um, and for college, for this particular instance, you know, Jeff and I both come from a club background and we like both like to develop athletes. We knew that South Carolina needed some development. I mean, let's face it, you know, South Carolina is not ranked as high in the SEC as of, as of this last uh, 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 championships. And we know we have to rebuild and we're both excited to do that. And so the process, the work, is what's exciting about um, to me about this whole thing, you know, kind of bringing kids and, and making them, you know, believe that there's a, there's a future and, and so forth. And I've many conversation I've, I've had with, with um, Jeff and uh, this wasn't something where, you know, we planned in advance. I mean, he was already at South Carolina and, he had called me at one point to tell me that, uh, you know, he was making the move and we had a little bit of a chat and then we had another chat a little later and it, it was all organic, more or less. Uh, we just started talking about the program, what it takes and so forth. I asked him, you know, what he was thinking about staff and he told me about all the different uh, um, models that exist out there, which I knew and just I asked him, you know, what he would prefer. And, you know, I think at one point it just came out that, um, uh, you know, if uh, he's going with this model, you know, I would be his first choice for an assistant. And I thought about it and I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. So um, then the conversation advanced from there and uh, 
before I knew it, um, I knew it, you know, I, I asked for a little time to uh, kind of ponder on uh, this whole decision because I knew it wasn't going to be easy. I'm, I'm very vested in my program here and uh, vested in the kids and the families that we have on the program. And I wanted to make sure that um, if I make this move, it's going to be, um, you know, one that I can leave the pro this program in a very good shape and make sure that um, whoever comes next has the same type of relationship with the, the UF coaching staff here, et cetera, and as well as can run a program that will be successful moving forward. Now that's a whole nother challenge. And I want to talk about that one too, because it's important for coaches to understand the proper transition because there is no perfect transition. And most of the time they end up getting botched in some way, shape or form. So it's, it's important to discuss. I mean, especially when it's your club, I'd like to go back and touch, but first I kind of want to still just understanding some of the, the, the move um, and the things that went behind it. What, what model, or if you don't want to tell me, you know, which model, cause I don't need to be giving away the farm or anything, but what, what made it, a good fit for you where you knew, all right, that's a role I can, I can play into, whether that's just your coaching characteristics that you want to go into, or if you want to give us specifics, we're not going to tell anybody. It'll just be between me and you, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, uh, listen, um, as you know, uh, Jeff is still working on, on uh, bringing on some staff and I was his first hire and I'm, it's very exciting. And, and uh, I think I was maybe his easier hire because we just, we're kind of mashed on some of the, the things that we were thinking about. And I know my role with South Carolina, it's going to be obviously a strong recruiting presence and a recruiting presence, not only, um, you know, nationally and in the state of South Carolina, but also internationally. And um, with my background and having done that before, I think I'm going to bring hopefully a lot to the table. And then also th this, the fact that, you know, we're both come from a club background and we develop coaches or our coaching style is, is to develop swimmers and to grow them. And so that's what I understand the most. That's where I get the most satisfaction as a coach when I see somebody improving and, and following through and, and doing the things that will make them better. And then in the end, they can see real improvement and, and success in the pool. I think that is really what drives me every day and um, that drove me at club level and I think it, it's going to drive me in, at the college level as well and I just wanted to make sure that I also had a, a, an impact on the on the University of South Carolina team that um, is meaningful um, because again what drives me is this very sense of, of satisfaction that I can develop swimmers and uh, help them be the best they can be and of course they have to do a lot of the work themselves but I wanted to make sure that I have a group that I can coach I'm in charge of a group because that is what gives me satisfaction and I think this is where I knew it was also a good fit because I know how um, Jeff had set up um, a similar situation here with coach Whitney and um, I'm looking forward to having a similar situation. And I think uh, in all other aspects, he and I see eye to eye and uh, not that we're going to agree on every decision um, moving forward, but if we agree on 80, 90%, which I'm pretty sure we will, then, you know, it's a, it's a win-win situation and we can both move in the same direction because, and as I said, I've been on both sides of the equation. And one of the important things for a head coach is to have someone uh, assistance that can, I call it, you know, kind of pushing the cart in the same direction. So we're not wasting energy going in side directions and, and in ways that will not benefit the program. And I think if we're successful in that as, as a coaching staff, I think we're going to move up quickly, which is hopefully that's the objective and the, the goal of, of, of this, as well as, you know, showing the South Carolina young men and women who are going to be swimming under the program that, you know, they're going to have a good time and they're going to enjoy themselves uh, and feel a, that sense of camaraderie, which is actually what I think most swimmers walk away from when they finish a college career. Sounds like you and Jeff are very aligned uh, with the fact that the club background leading into the college might be an angle that not all colleges and all college coaches who have been so beeline just to get it to college 
um, could necessarily understand or have at least had the experience to go through that process. I read, I was even going to say the other side, because there might be three, if you've done post-grad, and I thought that you had done some of that there at Gator as well, yes. especially recently with the greatest swimmer in the world, possibly. And yes. I, I'm just going to say greatest swimmer in the world, because he is right now, M male swimmer. Sorry, Katie. But um, yeah, I just, I, I think that you see all three sides. So let's go club. Um, I, Let's let's skip club and let's try to figure out where in this whole you know three different phases um, what the needs of the college swimmer are and what makes that level I mean the most exciting what why is that fire in your belly still to see the development in that piece when you've seen every angle and you had a place where you could do the other two what makes that one so appealing. Uh, well, I had the first prong of that, that fork that you just showed. And I had the third prong of the, the fork here. And I had a very limited, you know, exposure and opportunity to work with college swimming, the, the, the prong right in the middle. And, um, you know, recently, as of last year, I've also coached high school swimming here at um, Buholtz High School in Gainesville. And um, <laughs> I, I haven't coached high school in the f quite a few years. And I, that that sense of clear accomplishment, you know, where you go and you you put the team together and you go to the towards the same goal and so forth, um, that is one of the things that may be not missing, but less apparent at the club level where you're focused more on individual swims and bringing individuals up, you know, to achieve their personal goals. And those could vary in, you know, wide range of that and age group at the professional level, you know, they're all singularly focused and that's very exciting and, and, and it's very cool. Um, but, you know, here, while I learned a lot because I was working, you know, I, as club owner, I'm, I was working with Greg to, to make sure that as he was the high performance uh, coach here with me. And so the two of us were tandeming, tandem coaching this group and trying to make sure that, um, you know, they had everything they needed and, and um, every practice was as good as we could make it and their objective and goal, which is again, singularly focused on Olympic trials for the last two years um, was there and we're moving constantly in that direction and, and we're building this, this, you know, the, the success of that brick by brick. Um, and, but I haven't done it myself. It was more like I was sort of just kind of following along, you know, a plan that of course, Greg Troy has, which is a, a you know, he's such a presence on the pool deck as much as I want to say that, you know, I had a lot to, I don't know how much I had to do with this and I'm, I'm proud of everything I've done and working with all these athletes and, and they'll tell you I've been there as much as I could while making sure that the club uh, piece was, was functioning also very well. Um, but I haven't done it. You know, it, it, it's a little different in college because the college part of it is more about team, more about you know, you have clear objectives and goals, just like the professionals. And then you're trying to get to the next level as a team, not just as an individual. And that, that team aspect of things, I think that makes it really exciting. It's the same reason why I like, for example, um, college basketball versus pro basketball, right? So there's, there's more excitement in college basketball. It's, it, things change quickly and you have to be on your toes and, and you can bring a, a group of, seemingly average individuals to great success if you can work together and um, as a team towards that uh, ultimate goal at the end of the season. Yeah, I totally agree. The team aspect is best and well, maybe the ISL changes that at some point, but the team aspect in our sport is yeah. at the NC2A, all three division levels or even right. four, you know, with NAIA and everything else. So I completely agree. That's a terrific answer. Um, can we just talk just maybe a little bit about your work with the postgrads and tell me sure. one thing that's just blown your mind that you've seen them do recently or in the past few months? Just 
I don't know. I just got to ask if you've seen, I'm sure. sure you've seen them do something crazy. Um, yes, they do relatively crazy stuff all the time. I mean, you know, Greg's philosophy a lot of times is just, you know, it, it, if we do average work, we're going to get average results. So we need to do something special to be the best in the world. And um, that's what we strive for every day. So, you know, um, just, you know, you do a dive set and you, you go, you know, things like um, some hundreds and a 200, you know, suited and practice. And then you see some times that you're just blown away. It's like, okay, this is, you know, th th this shows something. And, um, or you see the opposite where they're just not as sharp sometimes. And then you have to make those adjustments. Um, but one of the things that I think I may have to have, you know, because both at club level, I've had some swimmers who've done some amazing things in practice and at the pro level, certainly I've seen some, some people who do amazing stuff. Um, but it all boils down to work. So the, the, the kind of work that swimmers do and, you know, Caleb's not going to, sugarcoated too. I think every interview he ever gives is he talks about, you know, you just got to put in the work. And I think a lot of people may miss this. You know, they look at Caleb as a, as a sprinter who does like sprinter kind of work to get faster all the time. But if you take his 50 yards, 17, six, or you, you, you take his hundred butterfly or anything else, um, you know, his 200 butterflies are great. If his 200 butterfly wasn't so great, I think his 100 wouldn't be so great. So it all relates to work and how, how much he does and, and at the right time, um, you know, being disciplined about it, being disciplined about everything else that happens. We, we're we trying to be disciplined to, as leaders, as coaches, to pass on that, that discipline to the, the swimmers. Um, and it's a symbiotic relationship. If you don't show it yourself as a coach, you're not going to get it on the other end. So it's a full-time job, whether you like it or not. And I think if coaches understand this, and um, this is where I think Jeff and I really connect also, and what I hope and, and see, and you know, I'm betting that we're going to be successful at South Carolina, is this, this sense that we both know that there's a, a certain amount of disciplined and, and smart work that has to be done in order to be successful at um, any level, but certainly at college level. So let's kind of transition. Well, I actually want to dive back into that then. So what's the work? How's the work different from what you're doing with your Gator Swim Club? We don't need to necessarily talk about what times, but I'd love to hear what Caleb did in one of those fast suits in 100 or 200. But if we, what's the difference between what you're doing at the club level with the group or the type of swimmers that you'll be working with at South Carolina and what they need for those four years of college um, eligibility. What, what kind of training differences are there? Cause they all need to work. And that's something that Caleb proves you're right. Like he gets easily labeled as the greatest athlete in our sports history, which I think is fair. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean he was born that way. And it, that mentality probably makes up more than the actual physiological gifts. So that work is a big piece of what made him great. I want to make sure we reiterate all of that, but what kind of work do the kids need? Do the kids to young adults need in that transition from, you know, being 18 to 22? What's, what's the difference that they need in that window? Well, that's a great question. And I think that's where what everything kind of boils down to. And, you know, I, people, a lot of people ask and, and say, oh, you know, can you send me some practices that some of these guys do? And can you, can you do some of the, you know, we'd like to do some of the work that, that these guys are doing. And I'm like, that, what you should be doing with your 15, 16, 17 year olds is not what Caleb Dressel is doing now or that group. Um, it, and it, there's a progression that has to be achieved. And so what you should be doing is actually what Caleb Dressel has done when he was 15, 16, 17. I mean, that's what's going to kind of get you there because a lot of people are super happy to, you know, try to do the, the, the final workouts that, you know, someone's doing now. But if they don't connect to what you've done before and what you're trying to do and the progression doesn't make sense for the physiology and for the athlete, you may feel like, you know, you're not getting, you, I mean, frankly, I think you're not going to get the results you want. So at, at the developmental level, I can't use a lot of the workouts that 
we use with the pros. Um, I, I may take a set from here and there and modify it and make it, but the reality is that at, at, at the age group level with the swimmers, I work the most, which is 50, 14 to about 18 or so. And then, uh, you know, the pros, they need a solid base, a solid base of separate, different strokes, technique work, a lot of these, these different things that, um, you know, the professionals and Caleb, they already have 90, let's say 9% of that. So what they need to improve is very small things. Um, the other thing with the age groupers, you can, you can kind of play around a little bit with age groupers and, and kind of figure out, you know, technique wise, you know, if we change this over here, you know, is that going to get us a better result when it comes to the professional group? If you change something and it doesn't work, it's a big setback. You can't just kind of reset it immediately. It's going to take a while. So I'm, I'm always been very careful to make sure that, um, you know, Greg and I were on the very same page when it comes to making sure that, that the comments we make, the feedback that these athletes receive is one that is in tune with what we're trying to do. Because again, you, you, you make one of these mistakes that, you know, you're trying to change something, uh, even seemingly small that can get things out of whack. And, um, when you're the best in the world or one of the best in the world, um, coming back from that, it, it's a long road and you don't want to obviously make those mistakes. Um, age group wise, you know, those age group kids, I mean, you, you can, some of the same philosophies apply so you you still want to be careful a little bit but you have a little a lot more leeway with them and you certainly have to do a lot more develop aerobic development and then put the speed on top of that because swimming efficiency is still the number one thing that these kids need to to have you know you can train somebody to super fast in the first 25 of a 50 freestyle but you know how do you come back nine two like caleb did you know and when he goes 17 six that takes a lot of years of work and the right kind of development up front so you can get there at, at the later stages yeah that's um it sounds like you're you're big i mean coaching philosophy which i'm very much in, like on board and 100 percent with is your connection with the athletes and making sure that they understand where they're at in a progression, how they're fitting into what they need. And I like the piece of advice, the older they get. And I think this makes sense at the collegiate level. If you take a kid who hasn't done too much drilling and you all of a sudden start to do 12 and a half this, 25 this, 12 and a half on your back, then feet first, skull here, one hand, two, all that stuff. It could really, even at the collegiate level, take a kid who had a certain system and really mess with some things. Even if you're not directly saying, hey, you need to change the pitch of your catch or whatever it is. Um, so the higher up you go, you get a little bit less leeway in those changes and you better be darn sure that that's the change yeah. that's needed or else it could be a mistake. I think that's, well, that's valuable. Yeah. I like that. I think I've really appreciated the way that you've set up this college job. I'm a club coach. If you haven't noticed from my, sure. uh, my <laughs> question lines, I'm a club yeah. coach, <laughs> my questions and I get the appeal of college, but I want to fully understand it too because i'm happy with the development side like you're saying and yeah. so i appreciate the idea of how you know how, how much more specific it has to get the higher up you get and i think that it, like you're saying though the the relationship is what builds the trust that allows you to do those things and here's the transitional question how do you take these relationships and these are real relationships that you've built with kids and families and other coaches and now i mean hand off your club to somebody else like how do you approach that transition well first um it, 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 there's no right answer it's, it's it's very hard so i was actually very emotional about it the the week that i was making the announcements and um, everything started to sink in that hey i am actually making this transition and and, and moving on because you know it, it, it was my baby it, we, we were working very hard. My, my wife's in, in, uh, you know, she's the administrator of the club and she's, she's worked with me. This was our life. Um, and so I'm, you know, once the decision was made though, I knew it was the right decision for everything that I've, I've discussed earlier in this uh, conversation. 
And once you move past that, you just have to make sure that you assure your members that, that you're going to be looking out for them still. And that, you know, just because there's a change happening, it doesn't mean that the change is a bad one or is a negative one. As a matter of fact, every change is a new opportunity for betterment. Um, there's, there's, there's that piece of it uh, in there. And I actually told the kids that nothing good is all good and nothing bad is all bad. There's, there's a mixture of things in everything. And so what I tried to highlight is that, you know, the good ahead of them is much more valuable than the fact that, you know, I may be leaving the club and um, they, they need to figure out how they're going to move on. I, and I kind of told them, I said, you know, every few years, you know, I mean, not every, every year, actually, a, a good cohort of our club is just gone. It's, it's disappears. You know, they go to college and they hardly ever look back. <laughs> You know, I mean, some of them come back in the summer for a few weeks or a couple of months and uh, but most uh, of them just stay gone. And uh, then you just kind of watch them from the distance and we, we all develop, we all grow and, and, and get to a level where you seek more, you want more, you um, want to be challenged in different ways. And let's face it, most swimmers are competitive by nature. They just they constantly seek more. That's how they get better, right? And and we get uh, delayed gratification too because <laughs> you work for months at a time to try to get a best time at the end of the season. And um, uh, you know, patience is is something that they have to to learn. And um, I I think this all kind of ties in. It was very emotional, but we got through it. And uh, now I think everybody's looking forward to uh, you know new opportunities and. Um, I think they're excited to have Coach Halvey come in and, um, I, you know. Yeah. Will you have any involvement with the club? Does your ownership go away now? Uh, it, slowly. Yeah, it will. Um, I mean, I, I'm going to divest myself so there's no conflict of interest between uh, South Carolina and, um, and here, obviously. But my wife's going to stay involved a little bit with the club um, for some foreseeable future. Um, and... Um, our plan is to try to, again, as I said, I use the word divest as uh, as efficiently as possible and make sure that um, the transition happens in a manner that in in a manner that isn't going to impact the club too much, um, you know, from every aspect. Yeah. All right. That kind of covers most of it. I had one more question. Um, and it's kind of a fun one, I think. Uh, but I read that you're still an Ironman and that you're still, you know, actively swimming. Is that true? <laughs> well, um, yes. So I, I just swam in a master's meet yesterday, but it was one of those things that I wanted to support our masters for Gator Swim Club. We got about, I don't know, 45 masters that are pretty active here at all ages. And um, there's a master's meet in town and I went to support them. And, uh, sure enough, I was told that I had to, uh, sign up. They had a opening in a 50 freestyle and a relay and I had to do both. So uh, it was a deck entry for me. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm a little less active than, than I used to be. I used to be a do a lot more crazy stuff, uh, up until I was about 50 years old. Um, I, I did this crazy set at the one point where, I started at age 40 and I was doing hundreds of butterfly in yards um, times my age. So when I was 40, I did 40, 40, 100 butterfly on two minutes. And then when I was 41, I did 41 and then 42. And I tried to do it either on or right around my birthday. And I always did it publicly, you know, in front of my swimmers. And sometimes I would pull in swimmers with me that, you know, wanted to do this kind of stuff. So the last one I did was when I turned 50 and actually, um, Mason will be one of our swimmers who swims for Kentucky now, uh, did it with me. Uh, and, uh, that was the last time I did that. I, I figured after 50, I'm just, you know, I, it's going in the wrong direction. I can't Maybe at 50. You get to go to fifties instead of hundreds, you know? Yeah. I, I, I'm going to try that, but you know, I've, I've done some things, a lot of running ultra marathons and, and a couple of them and, and some marathons and, and, few Ironmans, but um, my, my body can't quite take it anymore. And also when I came to Gainesville, 
I was so excited to kind of develop the club and move forward. And, um, you know, in all honesty, coaching age group and then the pros on top of that, that takes up a huge chunk of my day. And so I had to make the necessary sacrifices myself to be able to say, okay, if I want to coach, you know, the Caleb Dressel, Ryan Lochte, you know, all these other pros um, group, then I really need to make my own sacrifices. And, and that's what it takes. So a little less uh, training for me, but um, I, I need to get back in some kind of better routine, um, you know, health wise. I, I recommend this to everybody. I think, um, uh, you know, exercise has to be part of everyone's daily routine to some extent. Yeah. Yep. I agree completely. And I guess I was also asking just cause you know, just, I've never met you, Robert. So I did a little bit of research just to try to figure out, you yep. know, angles we can go. And swimming kind of seems like a lifeline, you know, you came from Romania, had to defect to Hungary and then, you know, got a full scholarship at university of Wisconsin to come here. And it's just kind of been, swimming since and i'm the same way i look at swimming as my lifeline in a lot of different angles so yeah i was just curious if that was still a piece of you know well obviously it's a huge piece of what you do coaching wise but i didn't know if you still got in the pool and did that so awesome i uh, unless there's anything else you want to add about swimming as a lifeline or anything else that i've missed i think that's all the questions i've got for you no i mean you're exactly correct um i think the swimming (laughs) It's it's what I know best, and I can't imagine my life without having what I know best be a huge part of it. Obviously, the other part is my family, and and, um, and you know I love spending time with my family. My son, he's 15. He was on my uh, Buholtz High School team, and we had a great time. I'm actually a little bummed that I'm not going to get to coach him these next two years, but um, it is what it is, and and. Um, Again, sacrifices. We all make sacrifices when it comes to swimming. This is one big lesson swimming teaches us, I think. I think you're right. Robert, thank you so much for your time. I'm excited to see everything great that you continue to do now up at uh, the University of South Carolina. So thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you and go Gamecocks. You've been listening to the Swim Swam Podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swim Podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.